The film kicks off in a mining colony prison, where numerous inmates toiled tirelessly throughout the day. When a massive machine known as the Crusher broke down, a guard called over a prisoner named Kai. He inquired if Kai could repair it, and after a brief period of tinkering, Kai successfully got it operational again. However, the situation took a sudden turn when the alarm blared to announce the arrival of a new inmate. As they glimpsed the newcomer's identity, all the other prisoners initiated a rebellion, launching a fierce assault against their oppressors. Realizing they were outnumbered, one of the guards activated the control for the crushing pit, reversing it so that it pulled the prisoners toward the pit's edge. In a desperate bid to save himself, Kai was compelled to amputate his own leg to avoid being dragged into the machinery's abyss. Fueled by adrenaline, he then hopped on one leg and disabled the machinery, preventing the other prisoners from being drawn to their doom. Upon regaining consciousness, Kai discovered Hatcher watching over him. Hatcher revealed that he knew Kai's father and that they had fought together. However, he regretfully disclosed that this mission had been the one they weren't entirely prepared for. When Kai uncovered his missing leg, he was surprised to find it had been replaced with a mechanical prosthetic. Hatcher revealed his plan to infiltrate another prison located on a ship, but he needed more information. After a brief pause, he shared that their enemies had captured Kai's father and intended to make an example of him on Liberation Day. Hatcher, acknowledging Kai's expertise as a pilot, offered to help him rescue his father by hijacking a critical ship and retrieving vital data. He promised to pick up Kai and reunite him with his father once the mission was accomplished. Kai agreed to join the mission, and they launched into deep space aboard a vessel called the Arrowhead. For most of the journey, Kai remained in suspended animation, but woke up early to hack into the ship's records through the communication system. Hatcher explained that all Kai needed to do was connect the device, and the wrist link would handle the rest of the work. During the data download, an information pop-up warned Kai about potential vulnerabilities in the system if he continued. He informed Hatcher of this development. Hatcher explained to Kai that the situation was only temporary and urged him to cooperate. After the download finished, Hatcher informed Kai about a strange flare outside the ship and advised him to stay put until rescue arrived. He asked Kai to send the files in the meantime, and trusting Hatcher, Kai initiated the transfer. However, a system failure occurred, causing the ship to become unstable and halting the file transfer. All the safety pods were activated, and in haste, Kai made his way to the shuttle bay attached to the mothership. He secured himself inside a pod and descended to a desert moon, where the shuttle crash-landed. Fortunately, Kai emerged unscathed, but the ship's initial readings warned him that the moon's atmosphere might be toxic, potentially leading to paralysis or death. The onboard AI advised Kai to locate a new oxygen source as the shuttle's supply had been depleted. Suddenly, a male voice came through the comms, identifying himself as Oleander. He called on any survivors to reach his location as soon as possible. Hearing the announcement, Kai took notice. Kai ventured out of the shuttle and made his way towards the main crash site. On his journey, he came across one of the pods that had landed before the crash. He hurried to inspect it for survivors and discovered a woman inside. He brought her back to the shuttle, and when she regained consciousness, she introduced herself as Terran. Suspicion lingered in Terran's mind, as she couldn't fathom why Kai wasn't with them in the launching pad during the crash. She expressed concern that the launching pods would depart soon, and urged Kai to join her before they left. They embarked on a walk, eventually spotting the crashed ship in the distance. To their surprise, they also noticed a peculiar obelisk a short distance away. Terran surmised that Kai was working for Hatcher and began to recount Hatcher's dark past. She explained that he had been a ruthless man who raided colonies before the war, resulting in the deaths of thousands of people. Kai dismissed her claims, attributing them to mere propaganda. Realizing that the survivors from her ship would not welcome him, Kai left Terran and returned to the shuttle with hopes of piloting it to reach a nearby station. However, his attempts to activate the shuttle were thwarted when he was informed that he lacked the necessary codes to operate it. With no other options, Kai hurriedly returned to find Terran, who was close to reaching the shuttle. But before they could make it there, the ship began its ascent, leaving them stranded and desperate, yelling in vain for help. Something unseen to them emerged from one of the openings and dragged Kai inside, leaving Terran alone on the rocky moon. Determined to find another survivor, Terran decided to explore the area. 
As she roamed, she stumbled upon a shocking sight. A naked Kai, covered in a strange substance, lay on the ground with his leg fully healed. Astonished, she brought him back to the main ship and conducted tests on his blood. To her amazement, his body had formed a symbiotic relationship with an organism that not only healed him, but also made him immune to the toxic environment. Once Kai regained consciousness, Terran questioned him about his well-being and his experience. However, he could only express that he felt good, leaving her with more questions. Worried about their limited resources on the ship, Terran confirmed their lack of provisions. They ventured out of the shuttle in search of anything they could use for sustenance. During their exploration, they unexpectedly came across Oleander. Oleander was found encased in some sort of cocoon, and they managed to bring his body into the shuttle. With the help of an AI scan, they gained access to operate the ship. Once they got the ship up and running, Kai resisted the idea of letting Oleander join them, fearing it would jeopardize their mission to rescue his father. Taryn reminded Kai that she knew he had protected her father when she was younger, and she emphasized that the man she remembered wouldn't leave anyone behind to die. Outside, Oleander regained consciousness, disoriented and paranoid. He began ranting about how Hatcher would kill them all, and he picked up a gun from the floor. Before Kai could stop him, Oleander shot and killed Taryn. Filled with anger and grief over Taryn's loss, Kai retaliated, beating Oleander to death. When Kai woke up again, he found only the remains of two dead bodies. Entering the shuttle, he discovered it was almost out of power, because it had been left running for 34 days, roughly the same duration he had been asleep. The AI also warned him that it had detected Oleander's heartbeat while Kai was asleep. Over the next few days, Kai worked tirelessly to restore power to the shuttle, determined to reach New Holland before his father's execution. However, one night, as he lay asleep, he suddenly experienced excruciating pain coursing through his entire body. Managing to pick himself up and venture outside, he felt his body undergo a horrific transformation. The following day, when he found himself naked on the sand, Kai realized that the same symbiotic creature that had kept him alive had caused this transformation during moments of emotional instability. Returning to the ship, he attempted to continue working on the power source, but the AI system informed him that Liberation Day had been celebrated two days ago while he was undergoing his transformation. Devastated by the loss of his father and realizing that he had missed the chance to save him, Kai gave up and lay on the ground, resigned to his fate. To come to terms with his situation while residing on the moon, Kai made the choice to manage his transformations, preventing further loss of time. During one conversation with the AI, it presented a theory it had been pondering. The AI suggested that both Kai and Oleander shared a shared symbiotic condition, although Oleander's seemed to be permanent. It elaborated that death was now a part of their cycle. Despite the fact that Kai had initially killed Oleander three years ago, it appeared that Oleander's consciousness continued to exist in a newly replicated body. To test out his theory, the AR suggests that Kai could kill himself, and listening to the machine, Kai does that. And just as the AI said he's resurrected into a new body, putting the carcass on display, he uses it to lure the Olander creature into his trap and shoots it finally. After successfully obtaining a sample, a sound akin to a monstrous growl reverberated throughout the palace as soon as the creature perished. Perplexed by this occurrence, Kai discussed it with the AI. The AI revealed that it had heard the same sound when Kai took his own life, and it assumed that the moon behaved as if it were mourning every time one of them died, triggering its healing power. A few moments later, the AI expressed its wish to discuss Terran, but explained it could only do so when prompted. Frustrated by the lack of answers, Kai demanded the truth. In response, the AI played an audio recording, unveiling the night when Terran was believed to have met her demise. The evidence pointed to the fact that Terran had experienced her first transformation and cleverly managed to escape. Kyle was overwhelmed with emotion, unable to believe that the AI had kept this crucial information hidden for so long. While he felt regret for the time wasted, he now had a clear purpose, to find Terran. Kai gathered parts from the ship and constructed a body for the AI, enabling it to move freely. He embarked on an expedition in search of clues about Terran's whereabouts, exploring the surroundings extensively. During his exploration, he stumbled upon a vast tunnel system that seemed to branch out deeper underground. As they ventured deeper into the tunnels, the AI detected strong electromagnetic impulses emanating from within. 
Continuing further, Kai discovered their original bodies, both his and Oleander's, attached to the walls as if the moon had incorporated them into itself. Kai ended Oleander's suffering by suffocating him, also ending the existence of his beastly counterpart. However, he couldn't bring himself to do the same for his original body. Upon leaving the tunnels, Kai found clues indicating that Taryn had successfully launched herself away, filling him with excitement. While Kai and the AI were engaged in conversation, flaming objects began falling from the sky. Kai rushed to one of the nearby items and recognized it from three years ago, puzzled by the fact that it was just landing. The AI then revealed classified information, shedding light on the mysterious events. The AI revealed to Kai that the moon was part of an experiment involving time dilation. Shortly after, Hatcher arrived on the ship and informed Kai that only a few minutes had passed for him while he had spent years on the moon. Kai attempted to explain that the government planned to construct a prison on the planet, using the time difference to create thousands of pieces of equipment in a matter of days. Unsurprisingly, Hatcher was already aware of these developments and sought to exploit the moon's peculiar properties for his own gain. When Kai refused to cooperate, Hatcher knocked him unconscious. Upon waking, Kai was confronted with Taryn, who had been kidnapped by Hatcher while trying to escape. Hatcher threatened to kill her unless Kai surrendered the information he possessed. Faced with this dire situation, Kai informed Hatcher that the information was stored in the research probe outside. However, when Hatcher went to retrieve it, the probe exploded, as it contained a hidden bomb placed there when they provided Kai with the automatic foot. Inside the shuttle, Kai underwent a transformation into the beast, taking down all of Hatcher's men. As he struggled to revert to his human form, Taryn helped calm him down, restoring some control. Kai and Taryn were overjoyed to be reunited and headed toward Hatcher's ship, now under their control. When the AI inquired whether Kai would save his father, Kai disagreed, stating that he intended to save everyone. And that's how the movie came to its conclusion.